Sega's superscalers are a thing of legend. Spearheaded by industry genius Yu Suzuki, these arcade classics were instrumental in the evolution of the medium, especially with regards to games working in a 3D space. Naturally, Sega sought to bring these to their home hardware at the time, the Sega Mark III or Sega Master System console. In part one, we looked at the first five games to come home, and they were all successful, even if one wasn't quite in the way you'd expect. I'm Dan the Mega Driver of the Sega Guys, and in part two, we start three years on from the Mark III's launch in Japan, and the industry has already changed. Not only was Sega's uber-powerful export the basis of many of their arcade games, but both it and Sega's own Master System were about to be replaced. What did that mean for those Super Scalar ports? Let's find out in part two of Super Scalers on the Sega Master System. The System X powered Thunderblade descended into arcades in 1988 with some of the greatest sprite scaling ever seen. I played this to completion recently in Arcade Club and I'm still amazed. The way it transitions from overhead to rail shooter is just incredible. Of course, the Sega Master System couldn't pull that off, but what we do get is very faithful in terms of gameplay and execution. Without the scaling, the overhead sections play more like a standard shoot 'em up, but they're still great fun while the rail shooter parts are almost as impressive as space areas. The Master System port feels tougher to me, much harder than the arcade game, but it's still great. It's much better in my eyes than Super Thunderblade that came to the Sega Mega Drive that same year, as it features mover scrolling and has the overhead stages its successor lacked. A solid port then from Sega's internal teams. But speaking of Super Thunderblade, it would appear just three months later in Japan as a launch title for the Sega's Mega Drive console, which would have significant implications for their plans on the Sega Master System. With the X-Board over a year old, Sega sought to augment their Super Scalers once more with the Y-Board, and 1988's Galaxy Force was the first to utilise this super-powered arcade hardware. A rail shooter, which featured greater freedom of movement in its galactic setting with assaults on space stations, which would serve as the inspiration for many games, like Star Fox. This was a seriously impressive title. I'm actually playing Galaxy Force 2 here, as the main ROM of the first game is impossible to get hold of, because 2 is not so much a sequel, but an upgrade kit, for which nearly every Galaxy Force cab was fitted with. The Master System version of Galaxy Force then is a port of the pre-upgrade first game, but despite the differences in name, because the arcade version of Galaxy Force 2 is just an upgrade of Galaxy Force 1, the content is near enough identical, so they are actually quite comparable. The thing is, Despite how the arcade board is probably three generations of hardware beyond the old Master Saster, the little 8-bit console does really well. The ship is recognisable, and while there's a huge reduction in background detail and enemies, it's mostly faithful to the arcade original. You even get the space station assaults, albeit this is where I think the game struggles. While Sega did develop this port themselves, it wouldn't actually see the light of day in Japan as by 1989, Sega was fully focused on their new Mega Drive console, meaning this decent little port was for Western audiences only. Sega's export was still capable of producing industry-leading visuals, and 1989's Super Monaco Grand Prix was a testament to this. While this Formula One racer was based on the Monaco Grand Prix, the track itself is entirely fictional, as you race through the pack to keep above the required position to progress. The Master System port came in 1990, and was programmed by Arc System Works of all people, as Sega's internal teams were fully focused on the phenomenal Sega Mega Drive port. 
This version of the game features almost no scrolling track details and is permanently in split screen mode. The placement based objective for the first game is dropped entirely from a more traditional Grand Prix system where a CPU car will always be visible in single player races. It doesn't look or sound authentic at all and it actually plays substantially differently. It's almost as indifferent as Enduro Racer was. But despite that, there's a fun and engaging game here if you put in the time, learn the tracks and get fully engrossed in the robust championship mode. A spiritual successor to Afterburner, G-Lock Air Battle landed in arcades in 1990 on the System Y powerhouse. Alternating between first and third person perspectives, this favours objective based gameplay over the end to end progression of Afterburner, with high speed dogfighting being the name of the game as you destroy enemy targets. The Master System port was handled by Sims, just after their assimilation into Sega. It launched on the Master System in January 1992 and serves as one of the last two Super Scalar ports, both released that very same month. Despite being a power only release, this is actually quite a faithful and visually impressive port. The redesigned heads up display does reduce the play screen size by quite a bit and there are a number of visual cutbacks in terms of graphics, colour, detail, scaling and in sound. But this is as good as you could hope for for an aging 8 bit console at the time. You even get the transitions from cockpit to rear view as you progress through the game, which is no mean feat. Despite the developer not being a core Sega team, the release being completely restricted to PAL only, and seeing a release on hardware that was over six years old at the time, G Lock let 8 bit Super Scalar ports go out with their head held high. And just like we saw earlier, we're going to see something drastically different. Line of Fire is a light gun shooter powered by the X board that exploded into arcades in 1989. This is more Operation Wolf, or rather its 3D sequel Operation Thunderbolt, than Virtua Cop. Your heroes sit atop an armoured vehicle with mounted machine guns with the straightforward objective of basically just destroying everything in their path with bullets and missiles. Sims once again handled porting duties on the Sega Master System, which came home the same month as G-Lock in January 1992, restricted to PAL territories only. But this is a vastly different experience, with the game now becoming a top-down shoot-em-up, rather than a first-person light gun game. Unlike Enduro Racer, which saw a similar transformation, the results here are somewhat mixed, with drab-looking visuals and action which is slow by comparison. It does feature the same story and locations as the original game, however, so it's not entirely unfaithful. A mixed end then to the Master System Super Scalar journey, but an interesting one nonetheless. So that's the end of part two and 10 super scalar ports that came to the master system. Overall, Sega's little console that could really gave a great account of itself, servicing ports of games that were generationally well beyond it. And yes, you can play these in arcade perfect forms in many ways today. But that makes the master system versions no less compelling, especially with regards to how they got around the restrictions of the hardware and hopefully for examples like Enduro Racer, it just goes to show that Arcade Perfect isn't necessarily the best or only way to play. If you've made it to the end of the video, thanks for watching. We'd love to hear what you think about these ports, so get in touch either via the comments below or via the Sega Guys Discord. 
We're also on X or Twitter. You'll find me at Swooper underscore D. You'll find James at the Sagaholic and the account at Sega Guys. It would be awesome if you give us a like and subscribe if you haven't already. And if you want to be extra mega, why not become a member with a host of exclusive perks and content from as little as 99p. Even if you don't do any of that, we're still extremely grateful to have you here and watch it with us and share in the love of the greatest games company there ever was. So until next time, we will see you on the Sega side.